Well, I'm going to tell you, that my time with my grandfather's time, even his time, they didn't have a light like this. They had a little teapot with whale oil in it. And then it'll spout for your wick, and you light the wick, and you walk your own line with an open flame. Can you imagine what with an open flame up there? When you get hired on, did they hire all little short fellas like you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, to the lady, when I got hired on, I used to be six foot five, look at me now. <laughs> so watch your head as we go through. Putting it on the side of the roof and on the side of the walls and on your paper where the coal dust accumulates on it. Mix it in so it will prevent from burning as it comes out. So these jobs, this stoned us on a weekend and where we left off inside, when the explosion happened inside, it only went out to the stone dust and it stopped. It couldn't get any further than that. Because this what put the fire out during that night. And that's what saved my life during the night of that 1979 explosion in here. There were two movies made in this area. And I was in both of them. I was in a movie called Pit Pony. I was also in a movie called Mervridge Museum. Now guys, I'm not a movie star by any means. You'll see me running back and forth to the company store and the company home and the church and carrying the bodies out of the mine of the second mine, uh, Margaret's Museum. I didn't like the ending on of it, but uh, everything was right on, the whistle blowing that in the morning. All the percentage of coal that was taken out of this room by two miners was 40% of the coal. You leave 60. But these horses had to be tamed on the surface. Because on the ground, if there's a wild horse here, there's no place for a wild horse to be jump out and kicking. Yeah, if you don't want to be that young either, but just want to And that man would walk from out there in the fresh air with this canary above the roof. This canary is going to tell us if there's any methane gas in there. And as he moved the canary along the roof, as he walked in out there in the fresh air, all of a sudden it's going to hit 1% of methane. All of a sudden you see the canary jumping up and down the cage, you know there's something wrong just by reaction. So one to four percent will not kill the canary and you can work in it. But as the further you get into the face, there's five to fifty percent and all of a sudden the canary jumped up and dropped down and got up anymore. <laughs> so that's the end of this bird. So one fellow would hold it here, tighten the screw jack up good and tight. This machine has three steels on it. Now the mine that I worked had four steels. You're going to go into the six feet inside. The first steel is a toe filler. You would cut from this corner to this corner two feet. You knock the little pin out right there and you place a long or longer one on a tree footer and then you cut tree feet. So your third one was a five footer and this is the way it works. <laughs> scared of rats, showed her alone the box, not paying any attention. He snuck in behind me in the dark, and he had a long stick, and he reached in and hit me on the bottom of the pants stick. Well, I jumped that high, so my buddy said, what the wrong with you? The rat just tried to get up my pants stick. Where's he at? Here to fit up there in the dark, we can hear him giggling and laughing at us. Eh? <laughs> so after he left, he said, we're going to get him. We waited about two months. He came down his room, took his shirt off, hung it on the little timber outside, and went back up. So I went to my lunch kid. Mom used to get me tea and have homemade bread with butter and molasses, sometimes with jam sandwich. A wine bottle with black tea with lots of sugar to keep her energy up. So I took a sandwich out and I went up to his shirt. And I rubbed the jam on both seats up and down. <laughs> when he came down and put his shirt on to go home, we can hear him hollering and screeching. Here. The rats went out, out there and ate the two sleeves off the shirt. <laughs> You're not worry you won't bother us anymore, will you? <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes, because that water's no good to drink, eh? You know how that rat would steal that water out of our water jug? Well, if you leave the cork off, and you had a rib, and we had it down there, and we used to have the timber across there. And I said to Dad, so look at that rat, he's getting our water, he's, he's going to take that water. I left the cork off. That rat would climb up on the timber, drop his tail down into my water can, into the hole, and lift his tail up, and then lick the fresh water off the end of his tail. Oh. And after he was done, we start blowing drip drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but as growing up here in Glace Bay, I was born in 1938, the Depression was just over then, and my dad would get one shift a week, and the war was just starting to begin here at that time. And uh, we didn't have too much home as growing up here, and Dad didn't make enough money, and I have to tell all the people that we never made enough money to put food on our table. And I tell the children that as they go to here, you guys are very lucky, because in my home, we did not have a fridge. 
In my home, we didn't have an ice box. In my home, I didn't have a radio as growing up here. We didn't have too much because my father didn't make enough money to give us. He couldn't put any repairs to the old house. And that old house was made from the boards from the outhouses that were torn down. Because in that old house was just laying on bare ground like that. No foundation, nothing underneath. On the floor was no carpets or tiles. It was just old wooden boards having to be missing. You can look down between the cracks, you see the ground below us. We had no inside toilet in the old house. We had an outhouse. Climbing over them snowbanks in the wintertime with that eating just can't eat the same She's pretty cold out there. <laughs>